Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Vini and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be reviewing the Team Affinity Awards for the AL Central. Uh, uh, a couple days ago we did the AL East and uh, we got through those rewards. So today we're going to be doing uh, all the teams in the AL Central. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Starting off, we have possibly the absolute worst Team Affinity reward that you could possibly ever get in this game. Um, and I know that there's going to be like that one guy that says, yeah, but he has really good defense and he's really fast no this card is trash don't don't go after the white Sox reward don't don't waste your time this guy is not going to be in your lineup for very long uh i mean you would have to have a pretty terrible team to to have him in your lineup anyway Th this guy is just awful i know that he has great fielding like some of the best fielding in the game i know that he has some of the best speed and stealing in the game and i know he has an adequate arm and those are really important for shortstop and that's the only reason that this card doesn't get like an insanely low grade like in the ones and the twos type of thing uh it's really kind of buoyed up by that fielding and the defense and all that uh and, and the fact that he plays shortstop but his hitting is just putrid man 59 35 versus righty 74 31 versus lefties that's like that's like common level hitting really he does have 115 vision so your pci should be pretty big but outside of that you're gonna get no power he has no contact it's just a bad card all around and uh, I, I couldn't justify giving this guy a, uh, a score over a 5.0, really. And uh, after I ran everything, it, it just it came out to an overall fag of 4.5. And man, I even feel like that might be a little high. But he does have great defense and he does have great speed. So there is that. But outside of that, this card is pretty worthless. Next up, we have the 88 overall Michael Brantley. And this is kind of a weird card because it's it's kind of stuck in between both worlds, you know? He doesn't really hit good enough to be a left fielder. Usually for a left fielder, you want a guy that has more power and stuff. But he isn't the worst defensively, and he does have some speed and stuff like that, good reaction, and uh, great contact and stuff. So it's like, maybe I want to try him in center or in right field. But then, then again, his defense isn't really good enough for center and his arm isn't good enough for right so really left field probably is the best spot for him defensively but he just doesn't have enough power for that spot um now i mean maybe you want to build a team that is a little more contact oriented with uh with a little bit of speed thrown in there and this might be the guy for you but outside of very specific team builds i don't see how this card is going to get a lot of use it doesn't mean it's a bad card, though. It, it, you know, if you, if you pick this guy up early on in the season, there's a good chance that he's just your best option and you roll with him for a few weeks until you can get someone better. But I, I still, I don't think that this card is, is all that enticing. Um, I wouldn't recommend going after him. And for all those reasons, I ended up giving him a fag of a 6.8. Next up, we have one of the best team affinity rewards in all of Diamond Dynasty, and it is the Detroit Tigers 91 overall Hal Newhauser. This card is pretty sexy. I've got to say, even the card art is sexy. I love that card art. But um, but anyways, a, as a player, he has really good hit and caper nine. Not like amazing Clayton Kershaw levels, but about as good as you can get for a non-signature card. Well, not as good. It could get a little better, but it's still pretty good. 85, 101, that's very solid. Um, and then his walk per nine is is not that great. That's probably the, the one major flaw with this card is that he's not going to be the easiest guy in the world to control. But I think that that's more than made up for by the fact that he throws really hard. He throws 97 and then he has this massive 15 mile per hour delta between his four seam and his change up. And then he throws in this big sweeping curve that you might not throw all that much against righties, but against lefties, that's probably going to be a pretty devastating pitch. And you can throw it against righties. You're just going to have to try to not throw it for a strike. You're just going to, you know, you're going to kind of have to bury it most of the time if you want to throw it to a righty for, for you know, strike three. You're not going to throw it for strike one or two most of the time. So, yeah, overall, I'd say it's a great card. He does get knocked a little bit for the lack of the pitch selection and, uh, you know, the fact that he doesn't have, like, a sinker or a slider or something like that. Something, something else to kind of... Uh, just mix in there to make him that much better but overall i think this is one of the best team affinity uh rewards in all of diamond dynasty and i gave him a fag of an 8.0 okay after that a lot of guys may be surprised at this pick because usually i factor in per nines pretty heavily 
um, and that new Hauser has much better per nines, but I think that this Brett Saberhagen is just right below him in terms of quality. Um, yeah, okay, he doesn't have the, the amazing hit in K per nine, so you're not going to be shrinking your opponent's PCI that much with this card, but he makes up for it in so many other ways. He has great walk per nine, so he's going to be pretty easy to control. He has good home run per nine, so he's going to, you know, suppress home run totals at the, at the upper levels. Um, and then his stuff, let's talk about his stuff, 95 miles per hour on the four seam, which is more than you would think you would get out of 76, uh, velo, but that's great. Then he has that 78 mile per hour change up a 17 mile per hour Delta. That's going to end up being one of the nastiest, uh, two pitch combos in, in diamond dynasty, hit them with that 95 fastball, then break them off with that 78 mile an hour change up. He's got a nice little slider kind of, he throws the slider a little harder than a lot of guys, but that's okay. I, I you know, that can be even more deceptive to some players. And then he's got that big, uh, that big loopy curve ball to throw in there at 80. So overall, a very balanced pick, uh, pitch mix, even though it's very vanilla. Um, I do like the, the speed differential and all that. And, and he has good break on all of them, especially that changeup. That changeup can be really devastating. Trust me. Um, so for all those reasons, I, like I said, I, I think he's a little lower than the new Hauser, but not by a lot. So I ended up giving him a fag of a 7.7. Okay, and then finally, we have the 86 overall Brian Dozier. Funny story, I actually went to college with Brian Dozier. I know him personally. He's a great guy, not a douchebag, totally a cool guy. But uh, but anyways, um, overall, this card, I think, is the exact opposite of what you typically look for in a second baseman, but that doesn't mean it's a bad card. He, he's kind of like a... I, I, I know a lot of people have compared him to like a poor man's Rogers Hornsby because he's a second baseman that has a lot of power, but you know, he doesn't do, he's not amazing defensively or anything like that. And I could kind of see it, but he definitely does have the contact that a guy like Hornsby does, but he is more of a power oriented second baseman and those are pretty rare and they can have value. So he's 85, 95 on the power front, 67, 76 on the contact front. So not great there, but not terrible. Um, definitely hits lefties better than righties. He has 64 vision, which is about average, uh, PCI size. You know, he's not, you're not going to have a lot of room for error, but you will have some then defensively. He does all the things that you need a second baseman to do fairly well. The reaction is a little low, but he is, he does have a fairly reliable glove and an accurate arm, but his arm isn't going to be all that strong. He's, he kind of has a noodle for an arm. So, you know, you might want to take that into account, even though it doesn't matter that much for a second baseman. And then on the speed front, 69, 64, uh, that's about average for a middle infielder, maybe a little bit below. Uh, it's enough to be a factor on the base pads, but not a major one, not something that your opponent is going to worry too much about. So uh, maybe they get a little lazy on you and you can steal. Usually that the, the, the 70 speed is like the threshold where your opponent really starts worrying about you. So maybe that 69 can actually be a benefit in a weird sort of way. Uh, overall, a solid card, not a great card, but, uh, you know, he, he's a guy, I don't know if I would like go out of my way to get this card, but if you just kind of accumulate, uh, points over the course of the year and you're only like an exchange away from doing it, then maybe, maybe go after this card. So, uh, overall I ended up giving him a fag of a 7.0. Um, I do think that he is on the lower end of the sevens, but, um, still good card. And okay, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I know this video is a little shorter than a lot of my other ones, um, but, you know, I just I ended up having the guys to review. I reviewed them, and it's like, okay, well, it's not going to get to 10 minutes, whatever. Uh, for the next video, I might end up doing two divisions. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of hoping to spread this out into six different videos, but if we just get, you know, four out of it or whatever, that'll be fine with me. I don't really care. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed sub, if you are new to the channel and, uh, I'll, we'll see you in my stream tonight. We will be streaming at around eight or eight 30, uh, central standard time. So be there. And just to let you guys know, I'm really close to the World Series at this point. I'm only like 81 points away, so we may end up getting there in this stream. So if you want to see that, uh, come stop by. Peace!